Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Mayim Kumar Prajapati and today we will be discussing about a topic called insecure desyllabization. And more specifically, we will be focusing upon PHP insecure desyllabization vulnerability. So uh, today's agenda is we will be covering what is the difference between serialization and deserialization process. What is PHP insecure deserialization? Then we will be seeing how we can identify the serialized objects that are getting passed from client side to server side using a proxy tool called Burp Suite. And then we will be understanding some of the advanced concepts such as gadget chain and magic methods that are required to exploit PHP insecure deserialization vulnerability. And then we will be moving towards the practical part of it. And we will see how an attacker can exploit this vulnerability in order to achieve remote code execution on the application server. So what is serialization and deserialization? In simple words, if I would say serialization is a process of converting complex data structure on the client side, such as object into a byte stream that is easy to transfer from client side to server side on the wire. And when this serialized object would reach to the server, the deserialization process happens that would convert this serialized object back into its original form so that the meaningful data can be extracted out from the object and the server would respond to the client accordingly. So this is the basic difference between the serialization and deserialization process. This is one of the examples that I have taken to showcase how a serialized object would look like in case of PHP programming language. Every programming language has its own syntax such as Java or Node.js. They will be having their own syntax. But since we will be covering the practical part in PHP insecure deserialization, so that is why I have uh, this object is more inclined towards PHP language. So when uh, you can see here, uh, there is a class called my class and this is the variable that is declared in the class that is file name and there is a function called underscore underscore to stream that is performing some of the methods on the user input that is coming from the client side. So this is basically a small code of a snippet. How the serialized object of this class would look like? So these are the two examples here. So this capital O stands for the object that means we are creating the object of my class my class has number of characters as 7. If you will count the length of my class string, this would be 7. So that is why we have written as 7 here. The number of variables that I am assigning the object is 1, that is file name. The length of the file name string is 8 and the type is string. We are assigning a value to this variable file name. The value is index.html and if you will count the number of characters in the index.html string that would equivalent to 10. And this object mostly in the base 64 encoded format would get passed from client side to server side and on the server side the deserialization process would happen. So imagine if there are no proper mitigations on the server side to prevent insecure deserialization vulnerability. So what attacker would do? Because this object creation mechanism is controlled by the user. So they can use any proxy tool and on the flow they can manipulate this object or change this object and then they can again encode this object in the format in which server is understanding and, uh, and giving us the response. So here what we can do if the attacker wanted to extract out the data of slash etc slash password file then what they will do instead of index.html they will ask that I wanted the content of slash etc slash password file so if you count the number of character in slash etc slash password file string that would be 11 and then they will encode this object and they will pass this object to the server and if the proper mitigations are not in place on the server then the attacker would be having access to slash etc slash password file. So this is one of the basic example of uh, insecure deserialization vulnerability. 
how do we identify the serialized object using burp suit so whenever you perform active scanning in the burp suit professional you would identify the serialized object with this message serialized object in http message if you are getting this issue in the target tab of burp suit then this would be your injection point to test for insecure deserialization vulnerability so that is how we identify the serialized object using the burp suit tool now you must have noticed a method called underscore underscore to string in the my class the, the example that i have shown to you so this method is not a normal method this method is already declared in the php framework and it has its own meaning but developer due to some reasons or due to some dependencies they are overriding this method so the property of these kind of methods they would get called automatically so whenever someone would create the object of my class this method underscore underscore to string would get called automatically so that is why we call these methods as magic methods because it doesn't require attacker to call them is explicitly so that is why we call them as magic methods so this is one of the requirement of uh, exploiting php insecurity serialization vulnerability that there there should be the implementation of magic method inside the vulnerable class the example of magic method you can see here are underscore underscore construct or underscore underscore destruct or these are some of the example of magic methods which are available specifically in the php framework coming to gadget then so gadget you can say gadget is a function a single function and gadget chain you can refer it as a chain of the function so whenever a serialized object gets passed from the client side to the server side this would get unserialized using the unserialized function in the php and this unserialized function can call multiple methods because sometimes what happens the data that is coming from the client side needs some processing so the developer has implemented more than one method or you can say 10 or 12 methods that would process this data so first the input that is coming from the user would get passed into function 1 then the output of function 1 would get passed into the function 2 and in the similar way it will get passed so this chain of function we will we are calling it as a gadget chain now uh, exploiting php insecure deserialization vulnerability so the requirements are because you have to look at the code of uh, the application so that is why you would require the access of the source code of the application to identify the vulnerable class the magic method implementation and the code which is written under the magic method so then only you would be able to identify this php insecure deserialization vulnerability that means if you are doing white box testing in that case you will be having access to the source code so you would be able to identify insecure deserialization vulnerability very easily because you are having access to the source code now suppose you are doing black box testing of an application so you won't be having access to the source code then how would you identify or how would you approach this php insecure uh, or insecure deserialization vulnerability in that case uh, sometimes the source code or the vulnerable class or some of the backend code would get exposed by the developer unintentionally in the comment so you can just press ctrl u in the application and then you can view the source code and then you can identify if there are any comments in which some code is there for the for the classes so that you can craft your payload accordingly so this is one of the way and the other way that if you if you are identifying some of the vulnerabilities like directed traversal or uh, local file inclusion vulnerability on the server then you can include uh, the files which are available on the server and you can see the code of those files and accordingly then you can craft your uh, serialization or insecure deserialization vulnerability payload to have the exploitation of it now uh, we will be moving towards the practical part of this vulnerability uh, 
okay so coming to the exploitation part of this vulnerability we will be utilizing this uh, php ggc tool so whenever you encounter an application that is using php framework and you are doubting that if it is vulnerable to insecure deserialization vulnerability or not then you should be having this php ggc tool in your bucket because most of the times uh, in case of black box uh, penetration testing you won't be having access to the source code of the application so that is where this tool would be helpful for you it generate the serialized payload based upon the predefined gadget chain which are available in the php framework so you have to be a little bit creative you have to identify the which php framework the application is utilizing then that you can uh, that that you can identify using the source code of the application by pressing control u or sometimes the uh, uh, framework name or framework version would be disclosed in the response header so that is up to you how do you identify the php version that is information gathering part on the uh, application uh, application which which you are targeting now i have hosted an application on my local server which is utilizing not so slim framework which is powered by php and we will be exploiting php insecure deserialization vulnerability in this test application so in the real world scenario first you have to enumerate which uh, php framework the application is utilizing in the backend now uh, it is accepting three input fields first name last name and mobile number i will just randomly enter any details here and for the mobile number also we can uh, enter anything here and i will just intercept this request using a uh, uh, proxy tool click on the submit button and then this request would be there in the bar proxy i am sending this request to the repeater for the analysis purpose and this is where my request is now you have to identify the serialized data in the request it could be anywhere it could be in the post body it could be in any of the header or it could be in any of the parameter that is getting passed from the client side to the server now uh, in the in a csrf token if you observe it if you will select it the bobsuit tool would automatically decode it base 64 decode so you can see here this is the decoded version of this particular payload so that is how this uh, serialized object would look like in real so we can say that this is the serialized data and this is our injection point the csrf token parameter is our injection point and we know that uh, this application is utilizing not so slim framework so first we have to identify if there is any payload which is available for this particular framework in the php ggc tool so i have installed this tool in my linux box and i will try to see if we can generate the payload for this particular framework i just have git, git cloned it and uh, this is the file or this is the binary that we will be using to generate the payload so i will just first list out what are all the gadgets which are available in this tool using php ggc hyphen l so it will list out all the gadget chains or all the frameworks that is supported by this particular tool and in this you have to find out if your uh, framework is mentioned and you can generate the payload accordingly so now i will just grab my framework name grab i will go case insensitive and i will just type slip here you can see that uh, it is supporting slim framework and it can generate the payload for us but the version is 3.8.1 we couldn't identify the version so we will give it a try blindly and we will see whether we would be able to exploit php in secure desertization vulnerability using it or not so you would notice uh, if uh, if i will go to the repeater tab again you will notice that the payload or the serialized object was in base64 encoded format so accordingly only we have to generate the payload so i will just go to the go to my linux box again and i will try to generate the payload so to generate the payload you just have to write php ggc then the name of the framework i want to execute system command 
and the payloads would be base64 encoded so this is the syntax i would be using to generate the payload so what this payload does if it gets successfully executed it will execute the id command on the application server and it will provide us the response so i will just copy it and uh, i will just replace csrf token value with it we will click on the send button and we will render it here you can see the id command got executed and it is saying that uid is zero uh, the group id and all, all of the groups in, and all of the sensitive information so that means we we were able to achieve the remote code execution on this application server but uh, this cell is not stable so we can also get the reverse cell from the application server using the netcat if that is installed on the application server we can just get the reverse connection uh, for for that also so we can try that so we have to generate the payload accordingly again i will just go again to my linux box first i will check the ip address of my linux machine that is 192.168.1.16 okay and then i will generate the payload accordingly instead of writing id i will just write netcat command here and see then i will write my ip address because i need reverse connection on my local machine only uh, the port number would be 443 because that would be less detectable the command that i want to execute i want to get asset cell and this payload should be base64 encoded as depicted from the repeater tag so this is the payload we got so we have to execute this payload or we have to send this payload to the application server using the repeater again i will replace csrf token value using this payload and before clicking on the send button we have to be in the listening mode right because the we will be getting a connection and uh, we have to listen the connection in order to receive the connection request from the application server now if i will click on the send button here okay we are not getting any response here and if we navigate to our linux machine now you can see here that we got the connection from 192.168.1.13 this is our this is our local ip and this is the connection uh, this is the machine from which we get the connection so if we will write here like uname or id command also so it will give us the output so that is how we we can achieve the stable cell using insecure decentralization vulnerability so that is all for today i hope you like this video